Okay, okay. Um, Stephen and I have been through the plan. She's not going to get away with anything, really. It's okay. Welcome, Miss Rawlings. Thank you for joining us. Can I start by asking you a simple question? How would you describe yourself? I'm a seeker of the truth, as simple as that. Not a journalist. Your aim is the same as mine and my colleagues, so I'm interested that you don't use that word to describe yourself. It's an old role in an old trade. Neither are appropriate to what I do or to the people I serve. They don't need the filters of conventional media, so I don't use its language. What about investigative rigour? Surely that's important for any seeker of truth. It's not a journalistic qualification. All of us can have inquiring and open minds, not just you and your mainstream media friends. The people I serve are more than able to make their own inquiries and come to their own conclusions. But the tools of inquiry and investigation and the time to employ them aren't open to everyone, are they, Ms Rawlings? Viewers need to have confidence that their news sources are accurate and fact-checked. That's part of the fabric of that old trade, as you put it. Is it not notably absent from much of today's free-for-all? Without those tools, might we not just equate opinion with fact, even alternative facts? You underestimate people's tenacity and intelligence. Many traditional media people do. It's a mistake that says a lot about you. It's a media elite angle, Stephen. <laughs> not at all. I'm under no illusion that viewers take what we say as gospel, and nor would I want them to. As you say, they have the right to ask questions. Take COVID, for example. You've described it as a hoax. That's a big claim to make. So aren't people entitled to ask for evidence? This isn't merely my belief. Many share it and all we're simply saying is that if you knew what we know, then you'd see the world differently. We have an obligation to share this because alternative views will never be represented in the controlled media. You haven't answered the question. Camera, go in for a close up on her. Okay, Stephen, this is a key point. How do you or your followers know that it's a hoax? I look for myself, just like the people I serve look for themselves. We both see the same thing. The way that governments dealt with the pandemic was designed to increase their control over our lives. It was a useful deception. Okay, so you're refusing to answer the question. I'm not refusing. Your positions are little more than conspiracy theories. I was wondering how long it would take you to raise that. It's the label the liberal media loves to use for anyone with contrary views. Please, Mr Yardley, don't embarrass yourself. I'm here to talk about evidence. You say that government responses to COVID have been about the reining in of liberties rather than the protection of public health. That simply signposts a conspiracy. No, it doesn't. I signpost, as you put it, that governments can't always be trusted. But what results from these theories causes real harm? A gunman opening fire in a Washington pizzeria. Nurses and doctors attacked. Bereaved families harassed. Phone engineers attacked. Shall I go on? I don't accept that I'm responsible for people making links and putting two and two together. As I said, my role is to seek the truth. It's a peculiar kind of truth you find, isn't it? There's only one kind, Mr Yardley. My work is about finding it where I can, or where it's too well hidden, raising possibilities for discussions. You're the one talking conspiracy. Stephen, define conspiracy theory and get her response. But your discussions seem to start and end in the same place. Let's look at the dictionary definition of a conspiracy theory. It's something that rejects the standard explanation for an event and instead credits a covert group or organisation with carrying out a secret plot. And your point is? It's an accurate description of many of the positions you take. You claim that shadowy groups are pulling hidden strings in some grand plan of some undefined deep state. It's storytelling. In a world of confusion and chaos, it can be attractive. We need a villain, so you provide one. That's very convenient for anyone wanting to close down inquiring minds. It won't silence the people. Many of us certainly have a sense of powerlessness, but it's disgraceful to vilify the people I serve for having independent minds. I'm not vilifying your followers. Yes, you are. The people I serve are often characterised as losers, seeking someone to blame for the imperfections of their lives. It's lazy and insulting, typical of the media elite. You often use the term media elite, Ms Rawlings. It's rather nebulous, but I imagine you're referring to people like me? 
you might very well say so, but I couldn't possibly comment. <laughs> you accuse me of vilifying your followers, but they have a rather jaundiced view of the rest of us, don't they? Experts and academic studies have shown that conspiracy theorists see people who accept established news reporting as sheep. Is that how you see viewers of programmes like this one? That's good. This is a crucial one for us. Experts and academic studies say so, do they, Mr Yardley? I'm not a conspiracy theorist, so I don't know why you're asking my view. Well, how do you think a conspiracy theorist would view it? How should I know? You'd be better off asking one. OK, well, often your, shall we say, beliefs are based on control being wielded by governments, law enforcement, ethnic groups and even royalty. Is that fair? If you're saying that I believe a relatively small number of powerful people exert control over a huge number of the powerless, then yes. But it's hardly contentious, is it? In fact, if stories of shadowy groups pulling hidden strings is what you define as a conspiracy theory, then you're not averse to talking about them yourself. How about Brexit and illegal funding? Big Pharma hiding negative research, or climate change scepticism based on junk science. Shall I go on? This is her targeting you in the station, Stephen. We can't let it go. Well, it's been proven that climate change denial has used covertly funded pseudoscience. That's more a question of big business than a conspiracy. So when you discover wrongdoing, it's journalism for the public good, but when I do, it's a dangerous conspiracy theory. Not at all. Your so-called discoveries are simply never proven or provable. Until quite recently, that was a niche way of thinking, but nowadays a third of Brits think Covid was either definitely or probably a hoax. A third think that the cost of living crisis is a government plan to control the public. This is based on nothing. It's based on people looking rationally and sceptically at what we're being told by those in power. You said earlier that you expect people to ask their own questions, so if more are doing exactly that, surely it's a good thing, isn't it? Unless you mean they should only ask questions where the answers conform to your narrative. Surely you're not denying that abuses of power by conspiracy exist? Of course not. Watergate, phone hacking, offshore tax scams, they're proven. And we know why they exist, because they directly deliver money and power. I'm merely pointing out that conspiracies do exist. Some haven't been proven yet, that's all. So we have to be alert to what's going on around us rather than just accepting the versions of truth given to us by those in power. Amongst your alternative versions are false flag events. The notion that acts of terror or violence are perpetrated by the government, but made to look like acts of individuals so that the government can clamp down on freedoms and liberties, ostensibly in defence of the people, but really as a means of controlling them. Some would suggest that Sandy Hook and 9-11 are examples of these. Do you believe that? And do you believe that they've happened here? The truth is certainly hard to see. There are many instances where the widely held explanation of an event doesn't stand up to scrutiny. If authorities' responses to that event exert centralised control, then it's perfectly understandable that people have their suspicions. You say that you help people assess these suspicions, but your detractors would suggest that you're a big source of them. I assume that you reject that. Camera, close up on her. Of course, but I'm happy to answer anyway. I help the people I serve by researching and inquiring. I bring them views and insights that the mainstream media will not. <laughs> views and insights, but not facts. You're often quoted as using researchers and investigators. Does your organisation have large resources in these areas? Not as large as your organisation, so we have to be lighter on our feet and less open to accepting the most convenient explanations. We rarely hear about your sources or your evidence. Yet expressing views on both is a lucrative business, isn't it? You could be accused of profiting from the very fear that your unproven theories create. I have a number of business interests that relate to my work in uncovering the truth, not creating it. I imagine that the viewers would see your own salary as a very handsome reward for your work, Mr Yardley. It's rather odd that you question my right to make a living from mine. People like you have no need for truth or facts, just confidence. Isn't your success merely driven by outrage and hysteria? You're very good at both, aren't you, Ms Rawlings? Close up. This is the last word, so it has to count for us. If you're saying that I'm effective in countering your mainstream media's narrative war, then thank you, Mr Yardley. 
Anyone who isn't outraged by the things that we've discovered must be truly asleep at the wheel. That may describe you in your organisation, but not me in mine, and not your viewers. Ms Rawlings, thank you. It's been my pleasure, Stephen. Lovely job you two. Couldn't have written it better. I was probably on my toes there. Me too. You might very well say that. It had to feel live. <laughs> no scripts. The bosses wanted a battle so we had to deliver one. They were always looking over my shoulder and especially today, but everything went beautifully. This will get them in a spin. Soon no one will know who's on what side or what mainstream even means. <laughs>